good morning students in the video you saw the principle of calorimetry the word calorimetry means measurement of heat calorie stands for heat metry stands for measurement so calorimetry means measurement of heat thermometry means measurement of temperature geometry means measurement of the earth so on okay so the word calorimetry means measurement of heat and the principle of calorimetry is when two bodies are in thermal contact then heat lost by the hot body is equal to the heat gained by the cold body heat lost by hot body is equal to heat gained by cold body provided with no heat is lost to the surrounding so while solving the questions if there is a heat loss mentioned over there that you will have to consider otherwise you can consider there is no loss of heat okay so uh, some numericals also i sent to you i think the remaining you might have done anyhow now a small topic is there a calorie meter a calorie meter is used to measure heat gain or heat lost it is a copper vessel and why copper is used that is the first important question why copper is used for making a calorie meter for example question can be asked why copper is used so the first reason is that copper is a good conductor of heat copper is a good conductor of heat that is the first reason by which copper is used now what is the advantage since it is a good conductor of heat it readily conducts the heat no heat is preserved by copper no heat is withheld by copper copper readily conducts heat so whatever heat given will be readily transferred to the condens usually the liquid over there or whatever inside the calorie meter that is the first advantage now the second advantage of copper is as you saw copper has very low specific heat capacity specific heat capacity of copper is very low copper has very low specific heat capacity so what is the advantage over here we know specific heat capacity of a substance is the heat energy is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of unit mass of the substance by unit kelvin 1 kelvin or 1 degree celsius when we have a substance having very low specific heat capacity then it absorbs very small amount of heat energy to raise its temperature so the net heat content of the system remains almost unaffected by using copper having a very low copper having very low specific heat capacity on the other hand if we use 
a substance having high specific heat capacity, it would have absorbed much more heat. So the total heat content of the system over there would have fallen down. So copper is used for making calorimeter because of two important reasons. The first one is it is a wood conductor of heat and second one is it has very low specific heat capacity. Then in addition to this, if you want a third point, usually two points are being asked. If you are in need of a third point, of course the third point is that, you know, copper is highly malleable. Copper can be drawn into very thin sheets. So, the thickness of the calorimeter can be made very small by using copper and you know heat capacity depends on the mass. So less mass is needed, so less heat is absorbed. So copper is highly malleable. Now you should not ask a question that silver also has all these properties, then why don't we use silver? Then the problem is that you know silver is costly. So naturally copper is preferred because of these important properties of copper. Now, since our intention is to measure heat, the loss of heat should be prevented. What are the ways of loss of heat? That means it can be either by conduction or by convection or by radiation. And you know, conduction is the mode of transfer of heat in which solids transfer heat energy. There we have good conductors and poor conductors over there. So, the copper vessel or the calorimeter is placed in a wooden jacket. You know, wood is a poor conductor of heat. And the space between, that is the space between the walls of the wooden jacket and the calorimeter is filled with either wool or cotton. So heat insulation is given. Conduction is prevented. Right? Now, convection. You know always convection current is set up in upward direction. So in order to prevent convection, what can be done? A wooden lid, wooden top. So it prevents heat loss by convection. And obviously you know radiation cannot be completely stopped but we can minimize radiation by polishing the surfaces. The inner surfaces are polished. Polished surfaces are poor radiators. So, using all these methods, heat loss is minimized. So, in this way, we can use calorimeter and principle of calorimetry. Heat loss is equal to heat gain. Numericals also you did. Now, we go to the next part. That is change of state. Change of state. When bodies are heated. then they change from one physical state or one phase to another. Solid changes to liquid, liquid changes to gas. On just a reverse process of this, when a gas is cooled down, it may change into liquid or it changes into liquid at a particular temperature and when a liquid is cooled down that it changes into solid at a particular temperature. So change of state we have been studying from lower classes now also we don't have much more to study but something extra. Change of state. 
state or face, we may use both the terms, state or face. So only three states we are studying, that is solid, liquid and gas. So, solid on giving heat, then it changes to liquid at a particular temperature and on further heating, then it changes to gas. And this process of change from solid to liquid we call as melting. And over here, changing from liquid to gas we call either boiling or vaporization. Either boiling or vaporization. Now, just the reverse of this process from gas, if it is withdrawn, withdrawal of heat, that means minus heat, then it changes to liquid, and from here, from liquid, if further heat is removed. <coughs> then it changes to solid. So, the change from gas to liquid on withdrawal of heat, we call either condensation or liquefaction. Either condensation or liquefaction. And conversion of liquid into solid, that one is called liquid to solid, then it is freezing and the temperature, specific temperature at which a solid changes to liquid, <coughs> it always happens at a fixed temperature at constant pressure, this temperature is called melting point. And melting point of a solid is same as the freezing point of liquid at that particular pressure. What is the temperature at which solid changes to liquid, say ice changes to water, is equal to the temperature at which water changes to ice provided with the for the first process, from ice to water, we have to supply energy. From water to ice, we have to withdraw energy. Okay. <coughs>